Good morning. Happy Monday, everybody. Uh, it is a special edition of the Digital Dream of the Gridiron podcast. And essentially, this episode will kind of recap the divisional weekend very briefly and, you know, kind of preview the conference championships uh, this coming weekend. So we will start off with the Tennessee and um, and then the Buffalo. Sorry, Tennessee, Buffalo. Did I say Tennessee, Buffalo? <laughs> Tennessee and Cincinnati, right? So obviously, Joe Burrow, you know, the the, since the second year sensation, you know, in my opinion, the uh, rookie, not the rookie, but the uh, comeback player of the year. Um, you know, he was able to lead the Bengals to a 1916 victory over the Titans. Burrow finished the day at 28-37, 348 yards, zero TDs, and a pick. Joe Mixon had 14 carries for 54 yards, 3.9 yards per average um, per carry, and uh, one touchdown. Jamar Chase went off for five receptions for 109 yards. T. Higgins went off for seven for 96. So really, really high, you know, yard, yards per, per average or yards per reception. Ryan Tannehill, 15-24 for 220 yards, one touchdown, three picks. You know, Bengals defense came to play, and, uh, you know, they went into hostile territory, and they outlasted, you know, the uh, the favorite, right, in the AFC number one seed. So now, now, now Cincinnati has won their, uh, their first ever playoff game. Um, or first ever playoff series uh, to advance to the AFC championship game for the first time since 1988. Um, and, you know, that year they actually went on to be victorious and uh, they played, you know, these guys <laughs> in the Super Bowl with a guy by the name of Joe Montana. So, you know, I'm, I'm, as a fan, I'm looking forward to seeing kind of, you know, how they do against Kansas City. Um, you know, I mean, they did beat Kansas City in week 17 of the regular season to advance to the Super Bowl. Sorry, I'm, just, I'm mixing up everything today, guys. I haven't had my coffee yet. <laughs> uh, they, they they beat Kansas City to um to advance to the uh, to to clinch the playoff berth, you know, for the first time since 1990, which is when I was born. <laughs> so, definitely, definitely remarkable uh, for the franchise, the fans. You know, definitely, you know, I mean, uh, it's amazing to kind of see, you know, how 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 far they've gotten this year. And you know, for me, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if they're able to, you know, kind of go into KC, you know, a very hostile environment, a very tough opponent, you know, in the playoffs, and um, you know, and and pull off the upset next up we have my 49ers <laughs> mind you i obviously never made the nfl i never played you know for the niners but obviously i'm a lifelong fan and um you know for me it was just amazing to kind of see them go into green bay you know pull off the upset final score is 13 of 10 um aaron Rodgers uh was held i believe to just was it no touchdowns or one touchdown let me pull it up guys the 49ers, obviously, Jimmy, Jimmy, the 49ers offensively did not score a single touchdown um, offensively. You know, the, the, and, you know, for me, the biggest thing was special teams. And so, yeah, so Jimmy, Jimmy finished the day 11 of 19, 131 yards and a pick. Um, Eli Mitchell, 17 of 53, three point yards per average or three point, yard, three point yards per carry. You know, receiving, you know, tip the usual suspects, George Kittle, four receptions for 63 yards, 15.8 eight yards per uh, reception Debo Samuel three carries or three receptions for 44 yards 40.7 yards per reception uh, Green Bay Aaron Rodgers 20 of 29 for 225 yards no touchdowns no picks um, leading receiver Aaron Jones who was also a leading rusher uh, finished the day with 12 carries 41 yards 3.4 yards per carry nine receptions for 29 yards 14.3 yards um, 14.3 yards uh, per per, uh, per reception so it's pretty remarkable what they're able to do with him you know coming out of the backfield. Um, yeah, I, I thought that this game, obviously, was, it was defined by special teams, right? So special teams wins games. If you need any further proof, go go watch the film. <laughs> you know, obviously, it was neck and neck up until the fourth quarter. Um, it was, I believe it was 10-3 heading into the fourth quarter. Green Bay was about to punt it with about four minutes left. And essentially then, um, you know, uh, uh, um, Hafanaga basically comes in, you know, with a huge play. You know, gain the pump block and then be able to return it to the for a touchdown. Um, and then obviously from there, Green Bay had no opportunity, and the defense was just was just was was just eating Aaron Rodgers and that Green Bay offensive line up all all night. You know, I mean all all night. It was just amazing to see, kind of you know what they were able to do. Um, Bosa looks fully <laughs> fully ready. Fred Warner also you know played made some critical plays down the stretch. Um, so you know obviously anyone who's worried about his injury. You know, I mean, was, I mean, you don't have to worry so much <laughs> or you didn't have to worry so much after seeing Saturday's performance. Um, and so, you know, obviously, you know, the only kind of issue is that, you know, with the, with the Niners offensive woes, obviously Jimmy has proven these playoffs that, you know, in the last three weeks, actually, the last three weeks, you know, Dallas Cowboys, you know, he throws, he throws a pick, uh, or actually, you know, the Rams, he throws a pick in the fourth quarter. He ends up driving down like the field and then he ends up winning the game um, in OT, um, you know, by, by, uh, yeah, by a field goal. 
same thing when he plays uh when, when we played uh dallas you know he ends up throwing the uh, you know the the pick in the fourth dallas uh, almost comes back but you know we're able to, to hold for the win and then um you know same thing with the against green bay on saturday you know we were able to get the red zone jimmy you know through a pick and so I mean, these are types of things you don't want to see, right? You hope that Jimmy, you know, can, you know, minimize the turnovers, um, you know, essentially. But, you know, I think it's just kind of part of who he is at this point, right? You know, um, and I mean, I think, you know, as long as, you know, we're able to, you know, click on all cylinders. I mean, if there's anything this game, if, if, if there's anything this game definitely proved, it's that our special teams, as well as our defense, not just our front four, but our secondary uh, as a unit are, are one of probably the most fearsome um, in the playoffs. And the reason I say that, is because, you know, we went into Dallas, we held them to 17 points. We went into Green Bay, the number one seed, held them to 10 points, you know, which is remarkable. Um, so I do think, you know, I really like, you know, how our defense and our special teams are playing, um, you know, for the Niners. Um, and essentially, I'm looking forward to seeing, you know, how we do the conference championship against a familiar foe. And we'll get into that game now. <clears throat> Obviously, the Rams beat the Bucks. 30 to 27, um, you know, it came down to a last um, with 46 seconds left. Uh, basically, Matt Stafford drives length of the field. He hits Cooper Cup twice to basically get them in the field goal range. Um, Matt Gay hits the field goal, and that's basically it. You know, um, Tom Brady, you know, I believe it was 26, no, sorry, 27, 27, six heading into the fourth. And then the Buccaneers came back and tied at 27 all with 42 seconds left. And so, I mean, Kudos to Matt Stafford. I mean, yeah, this is his second playoff win um, of his entire career, right? This postseason and the season has kind of been a has been a resurgence, a career resurgence for Matt Stafford, and also for uh, um, OBJ. You know, because OBJ, Odell Beckham Jr., before he came to the uh, to the Rams, you know, he he actually had not he had he had no playoff wins. He only had one playoff game, I believe, with the, the Giants back in 2016. They ended up losing to Green Bay, um, and so. Um, this 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 season kind of really uh, is a true testament to uh, to 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 OBJ's um, you know kind of will resolve and uh, you know as a superstar receiver you know kind of really showing him how he can be on a catch chancer caliber contender. Um, Cooper Cup obviously you know great game. Um, actually, let me pull up the stats real quick, guys. So let's see. Cooper Cup, I mean, those last two catches down the stretch. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, what more can you say? I mean, he got the triple crown, right? And, uh, I mean, so, yeah, two, Cooper Cup finished the game for nine receptions for 183 yards, 20.3 yards per reception and a touchdown. <clears throat> That's incredible, right? Cam Akers, 24 carries, 48 yards. Matt Stafford, 28 of 38, 360 yards, two touchdowns, no picks. Just an incredible, almost perfect game. Um, defense played really well, obviously, uh, up, 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 up until the fourth quarter when they allowed Tampa Bay back in the game. Uh, but, you know, Tom Brady finished the game 30 of 30 of 54, 329 yards on the day, one touchdown, one pick. Leonard Fournette, 13 carries for 51 yards, 3.9 yards per carry, two touchdowns. Um, Mike Evans finished the game with eight receptions for 119 yards and a touchdown. So, you know, I mean, not much, not much more needs to be said. You know, obviously, you know, the Buccaneers, Mike Evans, I do remember he beat Jalen Ramsey on, on, on one touchdown. It was just, I mean, it was, it was a great, great, great route, you know, great throw uh, from Brady. So, I mean, um, yeah, I mean, you know, kudos to the Rams, you know, for getting back into the NFC Chance game after three years. Um, and yeah, no, I mean, the NFC West, you know, obviously the NFC goes to the West. So I'm looking forward to, to a great game um, on, on this coming Saturday, sorry, Sunday, Sunday at 3, 340 PSD. Final game of the weekend, arguably potentially the best one, even though every single game was a great game. Um, let's see. So Tia, basically the Bills lose to the Chiefs in overtime. Final score was 42-36. Um, and uh, Josh Allen finished the game for 27-37, 320 yards, four touchdowns, no picks. Josh Allen also had 11 carries for 68 yards, 6.2 yards per carry. Gabriel Davis had eight receptions for 200 yards, four touchdowns. So he had a remarkable game. Um, Pat, Patrick, Patrick Mahomes, 33 of 44, 378 yards, three touchdowns, no picks. Patrick Mahomes also was leading rusher with seven carries, 69 yards, 9.9 yards per carry, one touchdown. Um, Tyreek Hill, 11 receptions, 150 yards per 150 total yards receiving, uh, three, 13.6 yards per, per reception, one touchdown. And Travis Kelsey, eight receptions for 96 yards, 12.0 yards per reception, one touchdown. And he was obviously the hero of the day for scoring the last touchdown uh, in overtime. So, Takeaways from that game, obviously, Casey's still, you know, the team to be in the AFC. Um, you know, I think it's going to be a very difficult task for Cincinnati to go in there and beat them in, uh, obviously, in January. 
Um, but hey, you know, strange things happen. It's the NFL, right? Playoffs, you know, the best teams can beat the worst team or the worst team can, can beat the best team. You know, best teams can obviously lay an egg, you know, any given Sunday, right? So obviously for this weekend, the do- underdogs are, were three and oh on the weekend, right? So um, uh, outside or three, three and one outside of Buffalo. So, I mean, it was an incredible weekend. Obviously the games all came down to, I think, uh, yeah, every single game was, was down to a single possession, um, three points to six, six points or less. Um, so, I mean, you know, more, I mean, it was just, it was phenomenal. I truly enjoyed watching these games and I truly enjoyed the divisional round, you know, obviously, you know, uh, you know, foreshadowing to the, to the conference championship game, Cincinnati versus Kansas city. I mean, we'll see, how Joe Burrow does, how that defense shows up to play um, at Arrowhead. You know, Arrowhead's a very difficult place to play in January. Um, you know, Chiefs obviously it looked like they haven't lost a beat, you know. So, I mean, it's, uh, they're definitely a little team to beat out of all teams remaining. Um, my Niners, right, we're going to go to L.A. And I'm um, looking forward to that. We're going to go play the division champs, um, you know, for, for the conference championship. SoFi Stadium, I believe this is their first – no, uh, yeah, this is yeah, this is obviously the first uh, playoff series, yeah, playoff games, I believe. Right? Let me check. Actually, when was SoFi? Was it 2019 that this? Let's see. SoFi Stadium. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the first ever playoff, um, first ever conference championship game held in, in, at SoFi Stadium. You know, I actually went to the first ever conference championship at Levi's. Right, so which is ironically the last uh that was the last con- last uh home playoff game for the Niners <laughs> so um yeah I mean I th- two years ago right I mean we were obviously the one seed you know we looked we looked obviously unbeatable we ended up you know winning the conference we ended up making a remarkable Super Bowl run you know coming into this game you know I think health is going to be a key a critical factor or like a key factor for our guys right I mean Trent Williams was limping Debo was also limping I think they're still listed on the injury report um, Kittle looked like he was, he was limping. Um, you know, Jimmy was playing through, you know, the, the thumb and the shoulder. So these injuries, right. We'll see, we'll see how, how it all kind of materializes, uh, coming, coming Monday or sorry, well, coming Saturday, heading into Sunday and then pretty much, um, you know, the Rams, I mean, they'll, they look, they look awesome. So, I mean, we'll see how they look, uh, you know, I, I've not checked the Rams injury report, you know, but, um, you know, they definitely played a tough game, um, against a very tough opponent yesterday, you know, the Super Bowl, they're going to defending Super Bowl champions house and beating them, you know, in the last 42 seconds. <laughs> I mean, what, what more can you say? You know, if anyone doubted Matt Stafford, I mean, this is now, I hope that, you know, this has been his coming out party. We can finally give the guy his flowers, you know, I mean, being the first overall pick, the expectations could not be loftier, you know, for a guy who went to a system and obviously an organization, which is quite honestly dysfunctional. I mean, you know, but you, I mean, you see the difference now with the Rams, with Matt Stafford, they look like a completely different team. Um, you know, than they have the past five years. I mean, no disrespect to Jared Goff, but I mean, that's just, that's just the truth, you know? So I think the Rams definitely uh, won the trade. Um, depending on how, 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 how Detroit, you know, kind of proceeds forward these next coming seasons, we'll see. But, you know, and speaking of kind of, you know, proceeding forward, obviously, um, you know, the, uh, the night, the Packers are now, Aaron Rodgers is now 0-4 against the Niners um, the postseason. Um, he mentioned that he doesn't want to be a part of rebuild. He mentioned that, you know, he's going to have to talk to Brian Guntekust and see, kind of see, you know, where that leaves him. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's one of those things. I mean, Aaron Rodgers is obviously, you know, the, the, the second best quarterback in the NFL, um, if not the best, just talent wise, um, you know, I mean, it's really toss up between, you know, Mahomes, Brady and, and Rogers, right. For that cat, for that, for that number one spot. And um, yeah, I mean, you know, this is obviously the third straight year. The, the Green Bay Packers have advanced and it's changed the game. The second straight year that they, that they've advanced as the one seed, but they haven't been able to get the Super Bowl. So, you know, obviously Matt LaFer said that, you know, they, that they definitely do want Aaron back, you know? So, I mean, Aaron, obviously, uh, <laughs> I mean, he's the MVP, right. You know, and um, he definitely, he definitely offers, you know, a lot more, um, you know, a lot more dimensions to the offense, you know, than, when, than if he's not there. And we'll see kind of how he chooses to proceed this offseason. You know, I mean, obviously, you know, there's a lot of decisions that need to be made. Um, so we'll see. I mean, um, ultimately, I'm looking forward to kind of seeing, uh, you know, kind of how the offseason shapes out, you know, and um, if Aaron decides to resign or if he decides to go somewhere else. You know, obviously there's that quote, <laughs> you know, about Aaron saying that, you know, yeah, the Niners, you know, I mean, uh, you know, I mean, when they asked, you know, oh, well, do, do you think, do you regret not uh, being drafted by Niners? And he said, not as much as they will regret, you know, not drafting me. <laughs> and they're foreign or against him, you know, but obviously Aaron has won the Super Bowl and we haven't, we've been to Super Bowl twice, you know, Aaron's only been there once, but he's ended up on the winning side, which is all that really matters, I guess, at the end of the day. 
but yeah, I mean, we'll see. I mean, um, you know, Green Bay, you know, they have a lot of decisions to make and, um, you know, we'll see kind of how they choose to proceed forward. Um, Debo is obviously, uh, he's been, he, the news, the, that he's been, he, he's been offered, you know, in, in, in a, almost like a super max kind of extension. Um, you know, and I think, you know, obviously that's the right move, you know, with his all pro season, his coming out kind of party this year, this all pro season. And, um, you know, he's been remarkable, right. The wide back, you know, that we have. And, um, yeah, we'll see kind of how the Niners proceed forward the off season. I'm, I'm looking forward to, I think, I think, I think we're going to, we're pretty much, you know, it's in the step in the right direction. Um, you know, obviously the question around Jimmy, right. I mean, really, I think this weekend, you know, if there's any legacy, that's going to be defined, obviously Jimmy and Matt Stafford, you know, I mean, Joe Burrow is obviously playing in a house money, you know, um, for him to even get the Bengals this far is just truly remarkable, right. To get the Bengals to AFC championship game, you know, he's kind of proven them right, you know, for, for selecting him number one overall in that last year, but Matt Stafford and Jimmy, you know, this is kind of really make or break for both those quarterbacks. You know, obviously Matt Stafford approved the, the you know, Detroit, not, um, or sorry, LA made, made the right decision, you know, kind of mortgaging their, their future, you know, to trade up to trade for him and Jimmy as well, um, being able to kind of show that he can be the guy in to lead San Francisco and, and, you know, um, not 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 be kind of out the door in the off season so we will see you know we'll definitely see kind of how things shape out you know me personally i mean i really hope jimmy comes out and performs um you know i do think he's a he has he he's potential to be you know i mean not necessarily great you know but i think he definitely you know if if we're able to come out on top this weekend and depending on who wins the afc if the Super Bowl matchup comes works out in our favor after 27 freaking years, <laughs> that would be great, you know. But um, obviously, one step at a time, and we'll see kind of how how it shapes out, you know. And because I mean, I saw Jimmy in his first start against Chicago um, at Soldier Field back in December 2017 or November, like end of November 2017. I saw him in the NFC Championship game at Levi's, you know. And um, yeah, you know, I've, I've definitely, you know, um, yeah. I mean, I can't say I, I've been fully committed, Jimmy. Right? I've been on on this platform too in the past. I've, you know called him out you know of not being that guy you know and um you know but hey you know george kittle basically said like you know the media everyone you know we we rip him um you know me not necessarily being me me just being a fan but like obviously the media and espn you know fs1 you know ripping him and basically he comes out and he does what he has to do to get them over across the finish line you know i mean essentially yeah the winning percentage is just remarkable and you know i mean obviously the the nine are faithful i mean you know everyone you know is fully 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 behind him right for this playoff push you know because you know we've kind of just really exceed expectations you know i mean being three and five going eight and two it's just remarkable and uh you know obviously the guests on the show who have been on you know i mean i could count names right but former old pros and you know former nfl veterans you know thinking green bay and Kansas city were the favorites you know i mean the niners kind of broke that uh, bust that bracket and buffalo got close you know but hey casey you know kudos them for coming out on top so yeah i'm looking forward to this weekend uh, of conference championship games i'm looking forward to seeing kind of how things are going to shape out obviously the niners are injuries you know they're going to really have a factor as to how we play against la um i do think that we should be able to go in there with momentum um and be able to you know hopefully take advantage of you know a, a, of not necessarily a long week but it will but it'll be like you know a, a full week um to recover and you know be back home not to travel you know obviously in the being same time so we do have to travel down to la but you know, i mean it's nothing compared to if you have to travel, travel to tampa bay <laughs> So, um, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to the to the to the NFC Championship game for sure. Um, hopefully, the Bengals can do something against the Chiefs. Um, I don't know, right? Uh, I'm not gonna say that you know I'm, I'm burying them, you know, but I mean maybe Joe Burrow really is that guy, you know. Maybe Joe Burrow can go in there and prove that you know he is literally you know the the face of the future. But then again, Patrick Mahomes has pretty much has been touted as that, and so far he's proven it so far, you know, the past five years um, as starter. Twenty-five years, four years. Four years. Wow. Only four years. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to, you know, this uh, this playoff match, this playoff weekend, conference championship games. Looking forward to seeing, you know, how the Niners kind of, you know, come out. I'm looking forward to hopefully seeing Bay Cincinnati, you know, come out with, with momentum if they can to continue the building their momentum. You know, defense needs to come up and play a perfect game against Patrick Mahomes, basically. You know, probably they're obviously they're their toughest opponent in the playoffs and they proved that they could do it week 17. Um, to actually make the playoffs, you know. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to all these games, and I'm looking forward to a uh, a great a great playoff weekend, you know. And um, yeah, you know, hope, hope, hopefully everyone, you know, I mean, you guys had a great weekend. You enjoyed the divisional match as much as I did. Hopefully, you enjoy this little episode, and uh, you know, hopefully we get some great games and some great you know, matchups, and uh, hopefully the Niners come out on top, you know. <laughs> all right, everyone, God bless. Happy Monday. Have a great week ahead, and I will talk to you guys soon.
Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the, of the Digitally Dreaming Off the Ground Podcast. God bless.